Hey there everyone, this is Danielle with another Super Mario Odyssey experiment. As you can see, we're back in Tostarena. There's a few things I want to try here uh, that we didn't try out in the previous Tostarena video. Um, I do have an idea of what to do in Chevaria, but I haven't managed to pull it off yet, so for the moment we're going to do some stuff over here and come back to that. Uh, firstly, you can see that moon over there, on the pillar over there. I did think it was impossible to reach that without getting on top of the pyramid, uh, which we can't do because we can't touch the sand, as you may remember. Uh, but there's actually another way to get over there, so we're going to get that moon first. Uh, basically, all you've got to do is just come down here, uh, get this bullet. And you can see it's pretty easy. <laughs> Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So yeah, you can get that one without touching any sand. Uh, no problem. Uh, we're just gonna walk back over. Uh, the other moon that I think we might be able to get is a bit more complicated. Uh, the deal is basically, uh, you can see... You may be familiar with this from, um... A, a casual run or from various speed runs. Basically there's a moon in that little corridor down there. Uh, if I climb my way down a bit, we can get a good look. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm touching the sand, but you can see there's a moon in there. Uh, you can see the sand all the way on the floor there, so it might be very tricky to reach. Uh, the idea I have in mind is basically to get up there, well, well to get down there, by sliding down the wall and then uh, doing wall jumps back and forth to make our way into the corridor. I believe we have to throw Cappy between the wall jumps, because otherwise we can't really move sideways from the wall jump. Whereas uh, throwing Cappy gives us a bit more hang time and allows us to navigate along the wall. So, we're going to be doing cap throws between each of the... Uh, it, as you can see, it's quite tricky. You have to actually tilt towards each wall as you go. And it's very easy to fall off and accidentally get stuck. The other the other problem with this is, even if we manage to get the moon this way, there's no way to get back out uh, without touching sand. Uh, because if we try to make our way out to the edge like this, there's nowhere to go after that. Uh, because we're doing wall jumps, we can't do a cap bounce, so we can't cap bounce our way onto that piece of ice, for example. Uh, and I don't think we can get enough height to get on top of it, considering it's much higher than the wall that we're jumping up here, and there's nothing else around that can help us. So I don't think there's a way to get out of there using just wall jumps. Uh, however, there is a technique that speedrunners use, uh, which is commonly called a dram strat. Uh, I don't like that naming because the reason it's called a dram strat is that the inventor of this particular strategy uh, a speedrunner named Dram55 uh, said that he didn't like having things named after him, and then everyone started calling every strat in this game a Dram strat. Uh, so I'm not going to be using that terminology because I think that's super gross. Uh, instead, we're going to be calling it a Cappy is a trans girl strat. Uh, basically, what you do is you want to put Cappy up here near this bullet and just hold her in place uh, like that. Then you want to go down, get the moon as just Mario, and then shake in order to home in on the bullet to capture it and pull yourself back up. The problem with that idea is that you can't hold Cappy in place for very long, uh, so you'd have to be quite fast, and while we can get into this hole with wall jumps, we can't do it very quickly. Uh, and we can't... Like, if we just do a dive like that, you can see there's nowhere near enough distance, and we wouldn't have access to a cap bounce with a holding Cappy out to the side. So I don't think using uh, the Cappy as a trans girl strat would work here. Uh, it might, but I do not think it will. Uh, there may be something else around we can capture, possibly. I know that uh, people use the bullet here because it's nice and close. Uh, let me see. Uh, there is actually also a pair of binoculars in here which we can capture and that doesn't move around which might make it a little bit easier than with the bullet which keeps moving but i don't think we can get enough 
uh, travel time through that hole without access to Cappy to do it. Uh, because as mentioned, when you're trying to do the wall jumps, I'll just show what happens if you don't actually throw Cappy between your jumps. Ugh, I lost it. It's hard to demonstrate because you know, it's not really designed to let you wall jump like this and avoid touching the floor. You can see uh, we aren't making a whole lot of progress in. I'm actually holding the stick straight upwards and we're going very, very slowly. Uh, you can go much, much faster if you use cap throws, but we can't use cap throws and also use the Cappy's Trans Girl strat because we have to put her at the top here in order for that to work and we can't do that. Uh, what we could definitely do is just basically drop down there and use a cap bounce to get into the hole without touching the sand uh, and grab the moon that way, but once we've done that, we have no way to get back out without touching the sand. Uh, we, could, we could warp, but to warp you have to be standing on a surface and the only surface there is the sand, and there's no way to get to any other surface. Um, technically, you can warp before you're officially touching a surface, the way the game thinks you are. Uh, for example, if you open the menu map at just the right time when you're falling onto poison, which instantly kills you when you touch it, you can still warp, because you're not actually quite touching it just yet. But I don't think that counts. Uh, it's impossible to tell whether we've actually touched the sand or not, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know if I'd done it at the right time, since the sand doesn't do damage when you, when you touch it the way the poison does. Um, so I think that moon is a bit out of our reach. Uh, however, that one over there was a lot more doable than anticipated, so that was pretty cool. Uh, if we just have a think here, there might be some other stuff we can access. Uh, there would be a moon in that cage there if we'd gotten further through the story, and we could get that one without any trouble. Uh, just by crashing a ball into the cage, very easy. Um, but, of course we can't do that from, because of the other problems we went, went through to... Because we can't get to the story, basically. Uh, we can make our way most of the way over to the next story moon. I'll just demonstrate that, and you can see what the problem is. I don't remember if I actually showed this in the first video. I don't think I did. Uh, because the checkpoint over there isn't activated. Uh, basically, what happens is, when you've done the first story moon, you get on this platform here, it starts moving, uh, you can get some, some coins and stuff by throwing Cappy at these hat launchers. Pretty cute. Um, you can also blop these things in order to break the blocks, which are hanging out, which is useful because the blocks have coins in them that you can get, and if you do it to this one, you can get onto that other platform there, just to our left. You can also take a hit, so watch out for that. And you can use that platform to get these three purple coins more easily. Uh, but basically, I'll just demonstrate what's over here. I won't actually get the moon, like, because I've probably touched the sand to do that, but I'll just demonstrate what's over here so you have an idea of what we're, what we're missing, basically. Uh, here, it's probably easiest just to not throw your hat at those, so that you don't have to... I wonder... Uh, there's actually a door over there. I'm wondering if we can maybe do a Cappy roll jump to get over there without punching the sand. I don't think we can open the door once we got over there is the problem. Um, but yeah, this platform keeps moving as you can see, and eventually uh, it lowers down onto the surface uh, like this. It stays put for a little while, but it doesn't stay very long, so you actually have to quite quickly do a Cappy roll jump. Uh, that was bad, but... It would have worked if I'd done it better, and I would have gotten to this spot. Uh, but once you've done that, there's not much you can do to actually get the moon shards. Um, what you're supposed to do is capture one of these Moais. Uh, I'll just demonstrate what they do uh, by standing on the sand, obviously. Uh, when you put on their glasses, they can see invisible platforms, basically. So what you're supposed to do is look at the invisible spots to know where to go to get all the moons. The little moon shards that you can see. Uh, there are five of them. I think maybe we could get some of them, but I do not think we could get all five. Um, maybe I'll just experiment a little bit more. Hang on. Uh, okay, we went on the Cappy Roll Jump from here. Actually, now I think about it, it probably would be better if we did a Cappy Roll Jump from the platform before it lowered itself so that we had a lot more height to work with. Uh, let me just see here. I don't think we can get all the shards. You can see there's one in the corner there, and there's one there near the checkpoint, and there's one over there also on the sand. I don't think we can get those ones without actually touching the sand. Uh, but we may be able to get some of these. 
So I'm just going to make my way over there again. Uh, these platforms are a bit slow, but it's no big deal. I think if we go from the end of this one, we might be able to get a bit more distance on our Cappy, on a Cappy roll jump and maybe get over to some of the non-sandy sections. Just experimentally to see how we go. Uh, I don't think that really helps us that much, because even if we get this moon to get into the inverted pyramid, we have definitely have to walk on some more sand. Um, but I want to I wanna see how we go, just for the experimentation of it all. Alright, so when the platform's up high like this, if we do a cappy roll jump from here... Okay, we can get to this spot. Uh, we can't see where the platform actually is. If we do a down throw like this, we can get an idea of where it is, and therefore avoid stepping off by accident. Uh, we should be able to go over there where the purple coins are without too much trouble, I believe. Yeah, I might do a cappy roll jump just to make sure we have plenty of plenty of distance at our disposal. There we go. Uh, I don't know if we can make our way. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, basically, if we want to get into that moving platform there to get up to the top stuff, uh, one of the moon charts is up there. Among other things. Okay, so this platform is quite narrow. Uh, as you can see, we're basically on the edge of it. Because we throw Cappy straight down. Uh, so we can't do a Cappy roll jump unless we do it at a bit of an angle. Hence, remember to do a good Cappy roll jump, you actually have to uh, have her above the ground when you do it. Whoa. Yeah, as you can see, this ledge is quite narrow. about there, maybe? Let's see what happens. Oh, that didn't quite work. I'll go back over to the platform and go from there. I can see where it is, which I probably can't. Uh, it's here somewhere, right? Okay, so yeah, let's get back on this platform and try from here. I think we can probably get to the top and get the moon shards that are up there, but I don't think we can get all the moon shards because of the way the other ones are positioned. Uh, the first time I did this, I just ruled that a moa was allowed to touch the sand, and I don't think that was a good choice on my part. Uh, but yeah, on the video, I didn't do that, obviously. Oop, poisoned. <laughs> uh, the problem, now that we've done that, is we're going to be all the way back over here. Uh, hmm, I wonder. Let me experiment a little bit more. Maybe if I do a cappy roll jump from this leftmost platform, we have a lot more height to work with. I don't know how much distance we can get. As you can see, you can sort of speed run this a bit uh, if you if you do things right, which is kind of cool. Uh, by jumping from the broken platform to the next broken platform, rather than waiting for them. Because of the way the breakable parts are positioned, which is kind of neat. Uh, if I stand way back here, make sure Cappy gets nice and close to the edge. Yeah. So that's not nearly enough. You can see get just to the edge of the sand from that amount of height. Just to save some time, I'm just going to walk over to here. Uh, since I've already shown you can do it without touching the sand. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about invisible platforms. That they're invisible. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to walk to this checkpoint just to save a little time with the experiment. But, you know, I've shown that you can do it without actually touching the sand. So I think this is, this is legit. I won't grab that moon shard because that would obviously involve actually touching the sand. Uh, I will check this moai just so I know where I'm trying to walk. Okay, so it's actually a little bit offset, which is why I got confused there. I figured it'd be right in the middle, but it's it's not. These invisible platforms are a little bit persnickety, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I don't think we can get that one. Um, because we have to walk on the sand to get like close to where we'd have to go to be to, to get it. Oops. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to just grab a moai and do it that way. Obviously. Um, you can just go like this and then go. Oh yeah, there's the platform. Now I know where to go. It's much easier. 
Alright. So you do that. Just, just get him away. really scary. <laughs> uh, if I make sure the angle is right, I should be okay. Mm, I don't think so. It doesn't look like I can reach that. Maybe I can, though. I'll just try it again a couple times. Triple jumps are a little tricky to pull if you don't want to move too much. Otherwise, they're pretty easy. Okay, no, I can't get that gain that much height by the looks of things. I'm guessing that's about the same height as that frog skip in the first episode, but I don't want to waste too much time on it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, what I'm thinking is I can probably cabby roll jump over to there if I can pull this off right. Maybe, maybe. It's hard to tell for sure, but I think maybe I can pull it off. The trouble is this platform is so very skinny, so I haven't got a lot of space to work with. It kind of helps though that, uh, the way uh, momentum works in this game, you actually get more distance if you're going at a bit of an angle sideways, like I am, in this situation. Um, That didn't work because it wasn't actually a, a vault, it was just a regular airborne bounce, which doesn't give you the same amount of uh, height. Whoops. And then I missed where the platform was, because <laughs> it's invisible. Um, I get the feeling it's possible, but I have no proof. Uh, Really? Bit of blue poop. In any case, even if we do get all of them, there's one over here. And there's no way we're going to get that without touching any sand. Look at the position. Unless... Hang on. Let me just, let me just check this out. So over here there's this bridge, you can see. Um, so maybe, maybe we can actually cross that gap. Yes, we can. Hmm. So perhaps we can snag the moon shard in the same way? I mean, I had to walk in a bunch of sand to get over here, though, so I don't think that's viable. Hmm. That gap is actually pretty easy to cross. Um, but yeah, to get onto these little ledges, you actually have to walk on that sand. I can't otherwise do. Hmm. So yeah, there's a shard over there I don't think I can reach. Uh, it'd probably be possible to snag it with Cappy if we could reach those little platforms there, but I don't think we can reach them without walking on sand. Uh, and there's another one over here, which we could probably snag from on top of this ledge if I could actually manage to do a Cappy roll jump onto it. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, it looks a bit far. Yeah, Cabby doesn't go nearly that far. Um, but then the the last couple is just one up here. So yeah, one, two, 
three last one. Forgetting one. There's one there. There's one there. Oh, there's one on the top here. And there's one over there. Yeah, so. So four. Yeah, that makes sense. Here you're supposed to bring the um, Moai up so you can walk on these invisible platforms without being able to see them, but I didn't. Because I know where they are already. These ones are much wider than the other ones, actually. Uh, if you do a downward capture, you can see. Like, there's plenty before you actually go to the edge there. It's about as wide as uh, these actual blocks that aren't invisible, I believe. Same basic width. See? But yeah, um, while we can definitely get here without having to touch any sand, I don't think we can make that jump. Because this ledge is quite thin, which makes doing a good cappy roll jump very hard. Maybe like, if I tried like a triple jump? I wouldn't get enough distance, I reckon. Cappy roll jumps give you much more distance than a triple jump. But yeah, you can see I got the regular bounce. Um, I'll just demonstrate the difference once we once we get back in. When you do it, when you do a proper vault off Cappy, uh, you can see Mario does a little flip in the air. Uh, but if you do a mid-air bounce, Cap Mario just bounces up like that uh, and gets not nearly enough height. Whereas if you do a vault, he gets lots of height, uh, and you don't lose your uh, mid-air bounce because you didn't actually use a mid-air bounce; you used the ground bounce. Anyway, uh, from this platform again, just, just trying to see if this is theoretically possible at this stage. I'm not trying to, you know, do a perfect run or anything, obviously. Maybe? Maybe. I wish the buds didn't fly away, because then I can't see where the platform is, because it's invisible. Okay, that was still a, um, a mid-air bounce rather than a vault. I'm not sure why, so I thought I did it right. See, that's what I want. Proper, proper vault. Of course, the problem is, if you accidentally do a bounce instead of a vault, uh, it's hard to recover because you've already used up your bounce, so you can't really use it to get back to the platform. Uh, just to be expected, of course, if you think about it, but, you know. I don't think I can make that distance. And I can't see anything else that would be closer. Hmm. Okay, where's this platform? Let's give this triple jump another try. See, that's very close. Like, that that's quite similar to the frog jump uh, distance, in my estimation. But it's just not quite enough. Um, you have to be a decent distance away so that when you try to dive on the cappy, you won't just bonk against the wall. Like that. Just to demonstrate. <laughs> If I can get up there, I can obviously get the moon shot on the top. I don't think I can get the other ones though, so I'm not sure it matters too much. Oh, and yeah, it's triple jump, Mario. Right? Triple jump. Yeah, I don't think I can pull that off. 
And I can't get over there either. And even if I could, I couldn't get the other other three shards properly. So yeah, and you have to do that. Uh, I'm just going to show where this goes, just so you have an idea of what would be ahead of us if we, if we could pull this off. When you get this moon, it unlocks... Uh, it makes some platforms appear here. You don't actually have to do a cappy roll jump. I just like cappy roll jumps. Um, also, you know, I can't get the moon, so I can't make the roll jump. Uh, that gets you over to here, which you can reach without going through this area. You can go around here normally. Um, but because of the sand, we can't really do that. Uh, and when you when you get the moon, it also opens. If I come over this way, walking on the sand, just you know, so we can get over there. It also opens up this door over here, which is the inverted pyramids entrance. Uh, I believe we could get through the inside of the pyramid without too much trouble. I think there's a little bit of sand in here, uh, but uh, not enough that it would cause a problem, basically. Whether these walls actually slope, they look like staircases. Um, but yeah, so when you get the when you get the previous story moon, this door opens, we can get in. Except that I can't see any possible way to get here without without actually walking on the sand. Um, like the closest bit of non-sand would be uh, probably over here, actually. Uh, let me see. Let's, let's just imagine we managed to get on top of that icicle, uh, which I have no idea how we would even do. Can we do like a cappy roll jump from here, or is it just not the right shape for that? Mm, maybe. I don't think we can though. And even a cappy roll jump, that's not going to be far enough. Look how far that is. Can't do a proper cappy roll jump because we have to be on this, this part of the slope to get cappy in place. Uh, actually, maybe I can just like put Cappy in place by doing something like this. Okay, that didn't quite work. Um, so yeah, even if we could get to there, uh, let's, let's see if like a triple jump maybe? I feel like bouncing off that lid doesn't help us too much. That lid, that taxi's, you know, bonnet. So you can see a triple jump is nowhere near enough to get us anywhere we want to be. If you could bounce off this guy, maybe, but we can't bounce off this guy. Uh, there are some icicles here as well, so if we get into one of these, we might be able to do something from there. Um, but I don't think there's a way to get into these either. Uh, from Let me see if we can do it from here, just to get an idea. Okay, so if we can get onto this this icicle here, um, we probably can't triple jump. We can bring triple jump. Uh, we can get to this stuff, which I think is supposed to be sand as well, even though it looks a bit more like snow. So we don't want to walk on that. Um, but maybe, maybe if one of these icicles we could do it. But I don't see a way to get to those either. Is part of the problem here, uh, because you can see all of these are way, way, way over here. Uh, the closest spot we could probably go from would be up here on top of the tower. Um, gives us the most height to work with. And you can see how far away that is, and you can see, that by just looking down basically, that there's pretty much nothing on the way. Uh, except possibly that little, little uh, pillar over there. Let me get to that pillar again, I'll use the bullet bill like before, and just see how far a cappy roll jump from that pillar gets me. There we go, okay, so we want to head that way, it looks like, it looks pretty far to me. Uh, but maybe if we get like a perfectly aligned cappy roll jump, we might be able to do something good. 
Hmm, I don't think so. That looks pretty far. Granted, that wasn't a very good Cabby Royal jump, but I don't think we'd get much more distance. Hmm. Good question, Cappy. Okay, so... Yeah, um... I don't think we can get all the moon shards. There's a chance we can get one more of them without touching any sand. But to get all five looks impossible. Uh, even if we could get all five and get the moon, which I think... I think we can get the moon fine. The moon's on a moon platform. We should be able to reach it without too much trouble. But the shards are a problem. Um... Even if we could do that, opening up the pyramid doesn't help us too much because as far as I can tell, there's nothing we can use to actually get close enough to reach it. Uh, there's a bunch of icicles around, but none that are well positioned to help us and none that we can actually reach in the first place. Um, another moon that's probably possible without touching the sand, surprisingly enough, is actually under here. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate where it is. You can see there's a room there. You can see that there's no sand on the part where the moon is. So it may be possible to get it without actually touching the sand to get in there. Uh, I've never tried to do this before, but basically there's a clip you can do by jumping on the back of the Sphinx here. Uh, I don't know if it'll work when the Sphinx has been moved. It might not. Um, I don't know how to do it anyway. I know I know you do something like a roll cancel, but I'm not sure of the right sequence of moves to use. And I'm bad at roll cancelling. <laughs> but yeah, I think that move would be accessible by clipping out of bounds, but I just don't know how to do the clip. Um, that also lets you get to the Sphinx's actual treasure room earlier, which is kind of cool. Or yeah, without talking to the Sphinx, but we didn't need to worry about that because the Sphinx has these little tiles you can stand on instead of sand, so... Um, but yeah, so that's that's Tusterina Revisited. We got one moon, we explored why a bunch of other moons aren't possible. Um, I had some fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh... Have another look over here to see if there's something that maybe I missed. Yeah, I touched the sand there, but even if I hadn't, again, there's no way to get out of here once you've collected the moon without touching the sand, because there's no other surface. Uh, and you can't warp unless you're on a surface. As you can see, yeah, the cap bounce will not work if you've been wall jumping. It just cancels it out, basically. That particular moon, I believe, is beyond our access. <sighs> well, anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, revisit to Tostarina and the one moon we got out of it. Um, and yeah, that's it for this video, yeah. Just, just thinking a bit here. I wonder, how far can a bullet, can this bullet go? I get the feeling it won't go far enough, but I just want to see what happens. Yeah, nowhere near. Um, basically the oasis is over here, and the oasis itself is not sand, so I thought maybe we could fly a bullet over. But the way the ground is sloped, combined with the range the bullet actually has before it explodes, there's, there's no way we could reach here. Um, if we could access the Lakitu, that would be really helpful, because the Lakitu hovers above the ground and doesn't touch it, so we could avoid touching some stuff that way, but... 
Um, that's not an option that we have at our disposal, of course. Yeah, it will get a bit ambiguous at the edges here because it's not quite sand and not quite grass. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think there's any way we can get over here. Uh, if we were allowed to ride the Jaxi over, we could do that. But I think that trivializes a lot of the challenge in the first place, and the Jaxi is walking on the sand, so I don't think that counts. Uh. Comfy spot. <laughs> But yeah, um, that's all the ideas I pretty much have to try out here for now, so I guess next time we're going back to Shivaria and hopefully being able to pull off the experiment I want to do there. It's really hard. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Uh, oh, feel free to guess what it is based on what I've said. Uh, if you, you know, like a, if you're like an Odyssey expert already or whatever. Uh, you can jump between these icicles without too much trouble, but getting over here is impossible, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and yeah, I'll just touch the sand a lot, but it was for experimentation purposes, not for, you know, actually doing the challenge, so it doesn't count. That's the rule. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and that's it for this video. And I'll see you soon. Woo me. Oh, let's cash this in. There we go. Woomy, woomy, woomy. Da, da. Oh, I actually stopped the recording. Oops. <laughs> Oh my gosh, classic me, making my videos way longer than I intend. What are you looking at, Cappy? Hmm. Cute. Bye!